Okay, so uh, we learned statistical independence in the previous video. And I said uh, it's really important. Independence is very, very important for practical reasons and for technical reasons. Um, <clears throat> and today, here in this video, we are going to learn how to check if two events are independent or not. There are two methods and we are using either of the two results based on independence. So we know that if A and B are statistically independent, first, the probability of one event is not affected by the other event. That is one property. And another property is special multiplication rule. So in other words, we mathematically, if we test if those equalities hold or not, by checking the equalities, you can conclude whether two events are independent or not, right? So uh, if one of the, like we, I gave you two conditions, you just need to check one of them. Then mathematically, if one equality holds, then the other equality automatically follows. So what we are going to is, we are going to uh, verify or check one of these two equalities. So let's think about the first one. Uh, we are curious whether A and B are independent or not. Then what you can do here is probability of A, calculate probability of A, and calculate probability of A given B, and calculate probability of A given B did not happen. So, and compare them. See whether they are equal or not. That is the first method, calculate probabilities. But again, to verify these equalities, there are actually three equalities. One pair, two pair, and three pairs. Right? So, however, all, again, mathematically, you don't need to verify all the pairs. You just need to show that one pair are equal. So if just choose any two of these three probabilities, and if you can show that those two probabilities are equal, then automatically the other equality follows. So just calculate whatever more convenient. Two, two probabilities that's more convenient for you. And a typical confusion, typical mistake here is using wrong condition. So again, the idea of here is we would like to test if the probability of A changes when B happened or not. So you keep the probability of A as the main event and then change the condition you change the condition here but if and what i do here is probability of a given uh probability of b given a which has nothing to do with unconditional probability of a right so uh if you are just caref careful about this confusion then it is pretty straightforward just calculate two probabilities and check if they are the same or not for example, in our example, in, in our uh, tuition and salary example, you just need to test one of these equalities. You may, uh, you may use tuition as a condition or you may use salary as a condition. It doesn't matter. You may, like here, independence uh, does not require one, one is uh, the condition and the other is the main event. You may switch the role as long as they are independent. So just choose any of these equality and verify that. Then you are confirming that these two are statistically independent. That's, that's the first method, okay? So, so in this case, maybe I would use unconditional probability because this is easier. So one of these four equalities include I like real uh, so four equalities include unconditional probability so I prefer uh, including unconditional probability because it is easy to calculate and then 
choose any of the other counterparts. Um, okay. So uh, you may. So the idea is this one. But again, don't be confused. Thus, you can you have to keep the same uh, event as the main event, and just change the condition. This is the key idea of independence. Okay. So here, this is an example. You calculate unconditional probability of tuition. For example, you, let's you, suppose we are trying to verify this equality and then calculate the left hand side, which is easy, 45%, and calculate the right hand side, conditioning on high salary, the first column out of these, calculate the ratio of 11.25, which is again 45%. If they are equal, then two events are independent. Ah, by the way, if you if you happen to realize that they are different, if they were different in other examples, if you find these two probabilities were different, then uh, mathematically you don't need to check any other equality. All the other equalities will also break, also fail. So then, if they are not equal, two events are not independent, right? So that's how we test um, statistical independence using the definition of conditional probability, the comparison idea, comparison across conditions. Okay, that's one thing. And this is a second method. Second method is based on the special multiplication rule. The special multiplication rule, again, can be written in this way probability that A and B happen at the same time equals probability of A times probability of B. So there is only one equality, so you have no choice here. You, What you need to do here is you calculate probability 1, probability 2, probability 3, and multiply the other two, the, the last two probabilities, and check the equality, right? Basically, you are checking this equality by calculating three probabilities. Okay, so if you find the equality holds, then A and B are independent. If the equality fails, then uh, they are not independent. Okay, so in in our example again, you have to calculate three probabilities. First. Calculate probability that A, 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 S, and T happen together, which is simply this one. And then calculate the simple probability of S and then for T, which are 25 and 45 percent, respectively. And then multiply these two probabilities of single events. Uh, here, you have to be careful in the algebra because you cannot multiply just 25 and 45 because percentage is not a mathematical unit i mean i mean it it is an illusion percentage is not uh, a unit but actually it means 25 is a 25 percent is a simplification of 0.25 right so you have to bring back the decimals and then calculate them and then then convert it back to percentage right percentage is not uh, how we use what we do in algebra right so be careful if you ignore this way and just kind of multiply them then you are going to get like more than 1000 maybe several thousand percent which is not a probability probability cannot be greater than 100 percent so be careful. Mm. Otherwise, otherwise, it's also straightforward. Okay. So here, uh, this the I I so far I gave you two methods, and mathematically both must have the same conclusion. Of course, if A and B are independent, then either method will give you uh, the same the give you the equality holds right give you the results that the equality is true vice versa if the events were not uh, independent 
then both methods will give you the uh, the failure of the equalities okay uh, so it doesn't matter which one you use if you may just try both methods just to make sure your algebra is not wrong that is just a nice way to cross-check each other and then with how do you choose which method you use uh, it's your preference and uh, it depends on computational uh, computational burden like in this example first uh, if you have joint distribution like this then these are pretty easy to calculate just addition uh, maybe the multiplication is the most difficult part in this way so I would use this method in this example when you have the joint distribution table but here you have to calculate one conditional probability if you have used uh, method one so if you like I personally I think it's more complicated than than this algebra so I would use this one but it's up to you uh, uh, or in another example if you have a conditional probability as a given information then this part will be super easy then you can utilize that information as given and then method one will be more convenient uh, algebraically so it is just your choice uh, there is nothing like none is better than the other um, so don't worry about that so uh, we have learned an important concept statistical independence and I showed you how to test it so so I'm going to stop this video here and in the next video I will change the topic a little bit so far what we have done was like when you are when you have this joint probability distribution how can we calculate uh, the conditional probability or in other words how can we study how can we compare how can you study the effect of one event on the other or how can you compare occurs uh, groups something like that that's what we have done but in the following video in the in the following two or three videos uh, following part of the chapter is going the other way right so when you have conditional probability as a given information how can we recover the underlying probability distribution table that's also very important important question very useful uh, statistical method so so I'm going to stop this video here and we'll continue that uh, in the next one thank you for watching see you later